Uh, we have been discussing the moment distribution method over the last few lectures and today we are going to be considering the moment distribution of a frame with sway included in it. So, let me take, uh, I will explain this, I have given you the background behind this uh, in an earlier lecture and let me illustrate what I meant by actually solving a particular problem. I will start off with a simple problem and then we will go on to a more difficult problem in the next lecture, so that you understand uh, what is the basis for the entire uh, procedure. Okay. So, Okay. So, here the question is determine end moments and support So, this is the problem statement for you. Okay. Let us start the procedure. The first procedure is again to determine, you know, I mean I just said this is a frame with a sway, but you have to convince yourself. So, you actually need to find out all the degrees of freedom. Uh, how many degrees of freedom? Well, you know 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 3 into 4. 12 unconstrained degrees of freedom, 3 plus 2, 5 restraints, 1, 2, 3 constraints. Degrees of freedom, 12 minus 5 minus 4 is 4 degrees of freedom. So, degrees of freedom are equal to 4. What are the 4 degrees of freedom? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, note that in this particular case, there are three rotational degrees of freedom and one translation and therefore, this is a frame with sway. Okay. So, let us start. What did I say? What was the first procedure? The first procedure was to actually restrain the sway. So, the first problem is going to be how do I restrain the sway by actually doing this and therefore, I am going to get a reaction over here. Okay, I'm going to get a reaction over here, and so this is the frame without. 
So now here, what do I do? Well, this is the structure. I find out, I solve the entire problem. I solve it by finding out first the fixed end moments A B, fixed end moments B C B A. There is no thing, so this is equal to zero. Fixed end moment B C is equal to fixed end moment C B is equal to zero and fixed end moment at this is A B C D fixed end moment at C D and fixed end moment at D C are equal to zero. All of them are equal to zero and since fixed end moments are equal to zero fixed end moments are equal to zero what would the moment distribution give me? Note that if fixed end moments are zero all joints you have the moment equilibrium. So therefore, the moment distribution for the frame without sway in this particular case becomes that we know what the moments are going to be. M A B is equal to M B A is equal to M B C is equal to C B is equal to C D is equal to D C is equal to 0. There are no member end moments. And therefore, if I take equilibrium of this particular case, since moments are equal to 0, you will see directly that this R is equal to 20 kilonewton meter. Okay? So, in this particular case, because of the special load that I have considered here, the computation of this R, the restraint, is very simple. And the frame without sway is actually a trivial solution. You do not need to do the moment distribution at all. Now, understand this that this is a special case because I am introducing you to the concept of frames with sway and that is why I have chosen a situation where a frame without sway does not actually require any uh, moment distribution. This is not generally the case. Okay? Next time, we are going to be looking at a particular problem where you will see that uh, you are going to have a situation where the moment distribution even for the frame without sway is going to give you a non-trivial solution and then you will see that to compute this R, you will have to actually do a, solve a lot of equilibrium equations and get to this particular value of R. Okay? Here it is trivial and therefore, I had no problems in computing the value of R. So, now what do I do? What is the next step? The next step is to release this R and see what happens to the structure What happens to this structure when you allow it to move? So, that means let us just say that this is some unknown quantity delta. Okay? So, what is going to happen? Note that when I take this delta, I am assuming that fixed end, right? everything is B and C are clamped. So, if B and C are clamped, how will the rotation look like? You will see that it will look like this. Because since this point goes here, this point cannot go up, it has to only go this way. And the amount it goes by is delta to ensure that B C remains. And so, okay. So, what are the fixed 10 moments? For the calculating the fixed end moments, very easy. All I need to do is find out what the rotation from the chord is and plug it into my equation. So, if I put that, what is my uh, theta AB equal to? Delta, this is 7.5. 
So theta AB is equal to delta by 7.5, positive or negative? From the chord to the tangent, anticlockwise, positive. From the chord, so theta AB is equal to theta BA is equal to delta by 5. And what can we say about theta BC and theta CB both equal to 0? What about theta CD? Theta CD is equal to delta by 5 and this is also anticlockwise, so it's delta by 5. Okay, so can I compute the fixed end moments? Well, all I need to do is I need to plug it into my uh, equation and if you look plug it into my equation, what do I get? I get that fixed end moment at AB is equal to 4 EI by L. L is 7.5 okay multiplied by theta a b which is delta by 7.5 plus 2 e i upon l multiplied by delta 7.5 this is equal to 6 e i upon 7.5 squared and this is equal to fixed end moment at B A. Okay. So, this is fixed end moment at A B and B A. What are the fixed end moments at B C and C B? They are equal to 0. What is the fixed end moment at C D? It is equal to 3 E i upon delta multiplied by delta by 5. So, this is equal to 3 i delta upon 25. Okay. So, these are my fixed end moments. The only problem over here is that I do not know what my uh, values are. Okay. So, if you look at it, uh, we had the situation that IAB and IBC were 1.5. So, I have to multiply by 1.5 actually. So, this becomes 4 EI into 1.5 and 1.5 here. So, this becomes 1.5 here. Okay. So, this one turns out to be equal to point. 0 0.0267 delta and this turns out to be equal to 33 uh, times so this is equal to um, ah, let me forget this. Let me not put this in. Uh, let me just compute this directly. This will be equal to 6. So, it is going to be 1.2 E i delta upon 7.5. Okay. Uh, and this is going to be equal to uh, point 0.1. So, this is going to be point 0.12 EI delta. Okay. This becomes uh, 3, 3 uh, 40, uh, 30 by 4. So, 30 by 4 it becomes 4.8 upon 30. So, this becomes point one four point eight upon thirty is equal to point one six EI 
delta 0.16 uh, delta. Okay. So now, if you look at it, that what you get essentially is uh, that the fixed ten moments turn out to be in this fashion. Point one six E I delta. zero fixed ten moment at C D is equal to point one two E I by delta. Okay. Note that the fixed ten moments depend on delta. Okay. Now here what I am going to do is I am going to actually assume a certain value of uh, delta. Okay? So, if I assume a particular value of delta, then what happens? Uh, I am just going to say that let us assume that E i delta is equal to 100. I am going to assume it and then we will see what happens. So, assume in that particular case you will say see that this will be equal to 160, this becomes equal to 120. Now, I have numbers with which I can do a, a moment distribution. So, let us now first, so we have done the fixed end moments, now let us look at the distribution factors. Okay? So, for the distribution factors, I need to know what K A B and K B A are equal to 1.5 i upon 7. So, this is i by 5. K B C which is equal to C B is equal to 1.5 upon 10. This is equal to 0.2 i, this is equal to 0.15 i and finally, we have K C D okay, which is equal to uh, three fourths I upon five. So this turns out to be point one five I. Okay. So, now once we have this particular thing, now we can find out the distribution factors. Uh, how many uh, joints? There are two joints. So, distribution factor B A is equal to 0.2 i upon the summation of this which is 0.35 i. So, you essentially have point five seven one and D B C is equal to point one five upon point three five which is equal to point four two nine. And then finally we have at C we have C B point one five point one five so it's point five and D C D is equal to 0.5. What can we say about carryover factors? Carryover factor, let me put down the carryover factors here itself. C B A is going to be half, which is going to be equal to C B C C C B. However, C <coughs> C to D is going to be equal to 0. Okay? So, having put all of that in, let us now do the moment distribution. So, I have
Now remember, left side for this, right side for this, bottom for this, top for this, left side for this, and right side for this. Okay, so here I have 1.0, whatever comes in distributes here. Here, what do I have? I have 0.571, here I have 0.429, here I have 0 0.500, and here, since there's no moment, we got it. And what are the values of the moments that I need to put in? Fixed end moment at AB was equal to <coughs> plus 160. This is also plus 160. What was the fixed end moment here? 0. What is the fixed end moment here? 0. What is the fixed end moment here? Plus 120 was the fixed end moment here, 0. Okay? So, this is my, uh, the values. Okay? So, I am going to now start doing the moment distribution. And let us just go through the process. Okay? What I get over here is, uh, in this particular case, it turns out to be uh, distribute. I'm going to do the distribution together. So over here, I get uh, minus 60, minus 60. Distribution over here is going to be uh, 4 over 7, so it's going to be 640 upon 7, which is equal to minus uh, 91.4, and this is going to be uh, 480, so this is going to be minus um, 68 .6. Okay, now the next step is the carryover. So from here I have carryover to here. So this becomes minus 45.7. Okay, minus 45.7. I have carryover from here to here. So this is minus 34.5. Here I get minus 30, okay, and no carryover here, okay. So the next step is distribution. This just needs to be distributed. So this becomes plus 17.2, distribution done, plus 17.1, distribution done. Here, the 30 has to be distributed. Uh, so, what we have is uh, here it becomes seventeen point one. This becomes plus twelve point nine. Okay. And uh, so this distribution done. Now we do the carryover process. Seventeen point one over here will become plus eight point six. Here the distribution will go as plus six point. Okay, and here there is no distribution. 
So now, uh, and I need the distribution from here to here, so that 17.2 distribution becomes plus 8.6. Okay, so now I need to uh, distribute this. If you look at this, I need to distribute this and uh, if I continue with my distribution process, I'm going to now, you know, just come over here so that I can keep adding. Okay, and here I'm going to just go in this direction. So this is going to be uh, distributed over here is going to be uh, plus, sorry, minus 3.2. This is going to be minus 3.3. So this is distribution done, distribution done. Here plus 8.6 uh, when we go mm, uh, 4 by 7, so that becomes 34.4, uh, so 34.4 becomes uh, minus uh, 4, 24, so 4.9 and this becomes minus 3.7, block here, block here. Okay, now uh, uh, let's put this together over here. So I'm going to have uh, this come um, to, to this point. So this will go, this will go in this direction, and this will come here. So this becomes minus two point five. Is the distribution here? The minus 3.7 goes over here, it becomes minus 1.9, okay, minus 1.9 and the distribution from this turns out to be minus 1.6, okay. So I am going to do my final distribution, why? Because if you look at it, I want to go down. Okay, so if I do this distribution, I'll get it equal to plus 1, so that's the distribution. This one turns out to be plus 0.9, okay, and when I distribute this, I get uh, plus 0.9 here and plus 0.7 here, okay. And note that I am not going to carry over any of these because these have gone down into the less than 1 percent level. So once I have done that, I can add these up, okay. Note the plus 9 needs to come over here as plus 0.5. So here also this goes this also goes this way, this also goes this way. So all I need to do now is add these up and when I add these up, what do I get? I get 177.1 minus 96.3. Uh, so I have 177.1 minus 96.3 uh, sorry, uh, 178 minus 96.3, so I get 781.7, uh, okay, 81.7 and here I get, uh, so this is plus 81.7, if I go through this, okay, I get minus 81.7. Here I get uh, plus 168.169.1, 169.1. So this becomes minus 2, minus 2, minus 43.7. So minus 43.7 becomes 1, 
becomes 124.9 okay and let us see what I get over here my uh, plus 60 plus 77.1 plus 77.9 plus 78 plus 78 minus uh, 3.3 is plus 74 point 7 this also turns out to be minus 74 point 7 okay and we have our member end moments and so once we have the member end moments let us see what we get in terms of the uh, the values uh, themselves okay so let us see so I have over here plus 124 so this plus 124 is going to